watching The Exchangery, where the price and the vibe is always right. Amen? Yeah. <sighs> After having a few days rest and a couple of Domino's medium thin crust pizzas to myself, I think it's safe to say I've adequately recovered from Dragon. It was a crazy three days at the Javis Center filled with queens, wigs, and tucks flying everywhere, girl. But to me, what was even more exciting was the Circle of Sisters gospel convention happening simultaneously on the lower level. Church ladies and drag queens. So it's like the premise of every Tyler Perry movie ever. Um, at one point, we were all standing out in the mezzanine level. A woman walked by Dusty Ray Bottoms, who was decked in black vinyl from head to toe, and mumbled, Jesus. <laughs> to which I looked at her, side-eyed Dusty, and I said, same girl. <laughs> Today we've got a great show for you guys because we're getting a live in studio performance by the super talented Mila Jam. <laughs> Plus Malik Yoba and Carmen Carrera are here. But first, you know what time it is. The gig! Music. Oh, I got a, ah, 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 ah. I like the, the clap. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and I got, uh, 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 uh. You know, I was um, walking around the Target yesterday afternoon, and shout out to everyone who's going, who's like really officially going back to school right now. You know, kids, college kids, high schoolers. And I was thinking to myself, I, if, if I could rewind back uh, 15 years when I was in high school, ew, that sounds so gross to say. <laughs> I was, yeah, 15 years ago, I was 14. That was my sophomore year when I went to professional performing arts high school. Shout out to anyone here who goes to PBAS. And um, going to school just sounds like, ugh. Imagine like having to like do homework and like do papers and have to be stuck with some shitty partner to do an assignment. You know what I mean? I was always that girl. I would always dump all the workload on my partner until the second to last night. I'd be like, so girl, like we were saying, you know. But so if you're going back to school, shout out to you. And um, Target was a mess, and um, but it always is. You go to Target, you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy three things. I'm gonna buy some Listerine, some chewing gum, and some pencils. Your total is one hundred and twenty-nine dollars, girl. So all the Target shoppers live your fantasies, but today we're talking about, um, speaking of $129, this first topic I am obsessed with, and it is about pheromone and Ariana Grande. Girl, the tea! <coughs> so backstory, Ari so Forever 21 approached Ariana Grande and they were like, hey, we want to do a collaboration and we want you to be part of this new campaign. Ariana Grande was like, uh, Jesus, gross, no thank you, I don't want to be a part of this. And Forever 21 was like, word, you don't want to do it? Fine, we're going to hire the bootleg Ariana Grande, some girl from uh, 14th Street and, uh, and, and 7th Avenue named Trishelle or some shit like that. And they put her in Ariana Grande, like literally an exact Ariana Grande carbon cutout lookalike, and they put her in an Ariana costume and they did this, like, this ad. And then so Ariana Grande was like, you know what, I'm gonna sue you guys for using my likeness when I said no to this campaign. And then Fairmo was like, oh, you wanna, so she sued him for $10 million, by the way. Which, that's not a lot of, I mean, it's forever 20, I mean, they're going bankrupt, so I guess that is a lot of money. <laughs> That is a lot of money for them, but um, uh, so but Pheromone was like, oh really? Fair so now Fair was like, so Fair, this is Pheromone's entrance look for season uh, for, for All Stars for I don't know if you guys are all familiar, and this is Ariana Grande a few months later, wearing a very um, conspicuously similar look. For her, I think this is seven rings or something like that. So Pheromone tweeted, Ariana should give me a cut of that 10 million since her team literally sent a pic of me to the designer and paid them to copy my look from All Stars 4. Finally met the designer and got, and got told the tea. I guess stealing from queer artists for profit is fine though. I know, and this is tricky for me because Ariana Grande is a very big supporter and lover of the queer community. Her brother Frankie Grande is a queer artist, and, her, and so you know she's definitely a, a, a friend and an ally to our community. But I mean, you, I mean, make some noise if you think that Ariana Grande got a lot of inspiration from Pheromone's look. Woo! 
And this has gone everywhere. E.T. online was talking about it. It was on E! News. Like, Fairmore is getting a lot of press, and people are like, yeah, you have a point there. Not to mention, Ariana Grande has been accused of this before. Um, uh, on, on her tour, she's been accused of stealing looks from lots of Asian designers. Like, like her team would like, this is a look that an Asian designer did. And couple cut to a, a year or a couple months later, Ariana Grande has this look on her on her um, sweetener tour. So it's like she's been in hot water. And you would think, like, if you've been accused of doing, of doing this before, I doubt Ariana Grande is, like, in the room, like, making costume decisions, like, oh, we're going to wear this. But if you know you've been accused of this before, you one would think you'd be mindful that your team would, like, be careful from doing this stuff. So I don't know. I love Ariana. I feel a ways about Farrah. I'm kidding. I like her, too. Um, <laughs> But you know, Ariana, if you are jacking these looks, I think you do owe some money. I mean, Ariana can afford to, to cut Fairmore a $50,000 a, a $50, check. You know what I'm saying? Give Fairmore and her just due. And the agent designers, you need to pay them that money too. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. If she wins this, this, this lawsuit from, from Forever 21, divide the funds up from all the people you've stolen, and then we can consider it fair. Amen? <laughs> that, that's fair. That's fair. Give everybody a little check. Um, everybody just send an email. If I stole your look, send me a Venmo and I'll fill the request, all right? <laughs> and then we can call it square. But until then, are we gonna come on the show and talk about it here? <laughs> oh, I need to be mindful, girl. My vagina is just out. Oh. I feel like a lady today, girl. Look at these legs, honey. Oh, oh yeah, look at that in the monitor. Ooh. Yes, I'm still single, if anyone's wondering. Um, I'm thinking of uh, 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 Miss Nicki Minaj is our next topic. Now, I know, I, I, I don't know if all of you are aware, but Nicki Minaj tweeted that she's retired. Here's her tweet. I decided to retire and have my family. I know you guys are happy now. To my fans, keep repping me. Do it till the death of me. Oh, that was like a rhyme. To my fans of me. To my fans, keep repping me. Do it till the death of me. In the box, cause ain't nobody really checking me. But all the black people in here are not impressed. The white people are like, what, Monet? <laughs> Speaking of, since the last time I the show and I was like four black people here, now we have literally tripled the amount of black people in the audience, and I'm here for it. Even Miss Thing that was sleep, that's over there in the corner sleeping. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk about you the whole show, Miss Thing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, um, but yeah, Ari uh, Ariana, Nicki Minaj says she's going to retire, and I, that really hurts my heart, because I'm a big Nicki fan. But I think she's realizing that she like can't keep up with like, not that she can't keep up. That, that, that's that's those the, those are the wrong words. But like Cardi B fans and those people, they're like rabid. Like Cardi B can post herself taking a shit on Times Square, and literally they will you, cut to an hour later. It's been reposted and retweeted a bajillion times. And Nicki Minaj friends, we're a little more like cut like cut back. Like we just we just wait for the for the tracks and the shit to come, and we love her that way. But I think that she can't keep up with how responsive they are, and and. It makes it look like they're not, that Nicki Minaj isn't as popular as Cardi B, but Nicki Minaj has broken so many records for female rap artists. She's done so much for the rap community, and she is fierce. And she, and by the way, she tweeted this and then had to delete it, and then tweeted it again saying, I'm so sorry because I want to like apologize. I should have like said it on Queen Radio first, because that's, do y'all listen to her, 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 her show Queen Radio? I don't even, I, where do you even get Queen Radio? Do you know? Like Apple Apple. iTunes? Apple. Apple Music. Oh. <laughs> Well, okay, so yeah, so on Apple Music, her Queen Radio show, they were, her fans were mad that she didn't spill the tea there first. It's like, no, let the girl tweet and live her life. Um, she wants to start a family. She has her husband, Kenneth Petty, yes, who, <laughs> <laughs> this is the doctor picture that we made. This is Kenneth Petty. This is um, Robert Petty, her son, and this is her daughter, Michelle Petty. <laughs> uh, no, this is, we made this picture up. She really, this, this, this is the real picture of, of her husband, Kenneth Petty. I don't even wish, when did Nicki Minaj get married? Do we know? Work. Honestly, he's fucking hot, and I would quit rap for him too, okay? <laughs> oh my God, how long have they been married? I don't know either. I, I feel like she should have made like a big announcement about it. I didn't even even know she was married. But anyway, she wants to start a family with him, and she's like, I'm done with this rap shit. I'm taking a break. Um, uh, well, not a break, but until y'all know, in about a year and a half time, we're going to see the headlines. So uh, Nicki Minaj quits retirement, new album out now. So the proof, we'll see if she really does quit, but I hope she doesn't. Nicki Minaj is a dope rapper. Megamatron is Megamatron. <laughs> Megatron is a dope record. Uh, 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 think of things like, uh, what, what is it? Monster. Monster is like one of the most 
it, whether you are white, black, purple, green, Asian, whatever, you know Adele freaking rap uh, uh, um, uh, monster on uh, a James Corden show. So Nicki Minaj is an icon. I, I hope she's not quitting because we all love her. Yeah? Yeah. So Nicki, don't quit. Come back to us. <clears throat> he knows Nicki? No, he don't love her. You don't love Nicki Minaj? Look at his name. Everyone look at him! <laughs> burn the witch, burn the witch! <laughs> Um, and then let's talk about Fashion Week. Do y'all know it was New York Fashion Week? Yeah. It was like DragCon, Fashion Week, everything was going on together, and some people were making headlines. So Zendaya wore this lovely suit, okay? And um, Michael B. Jordan, but I got tricked, because all the little things on social media were like, Zendaya and Michael B. Jordan wore the same suit. He wore this like nine months ago, back in like April. So it's not the same thing, but Zendaya looks fucking hot. Does she not, girl? She is, she is really becoming that bitch. Euphoria, this suit, Zendaya is the shit. She also has a collaboration with um, Tommy Hilfiger that, um, that she had, that they did a fashion show and she live streamed this so everyone can follow it. Um, next up is, let's talk about uh, India Moore. Do we have India Moore? Okay, first of all, we all know India, Angel from Pose. No, not Angel. Yes, Angel from Pose. And um, she wore this amazing gown to the, to the show, but if you look at her earrings, they go from her ears all the way to her belly button. And on each, each picture in this is um, a picture of a black trans woman who has, who has died. So India Moore is really, that is such a loud and powerful statement. And she's such a beautiful human being. And she, and, um, and, um, she, has, she, she made this quote, some of you may be uncomfortable with the politics of my speech, and I want to apologize for that because my life is politics. Trans people deserve safety, acknowledgement and respect, not just when we are on the covers of magazines, but when we are poor and when we are on the streets. So she made a really loud and very bold statement, and it has a lot of people talking, so make some for India more for doing that. We appreciate that, India. I love her. I would love to get her on the show. That would be amazing. First of all, that day, I'm just gonna come in a fucking burqa because there's no way I could ever compete with the beautiful and the grace that is India Moore. She's fabulous. And we celebrated here because she was on the cover of the first trans woman to be on the cover of Elle magazine, I think it was. Yeah, so she really is breaking ground and being a really, really, really fierce trailblazer um, for, for, for trans people, and we love her here. Next, I wanna talk about is, <laughs> I didn't know this was a thing, it's so ridiculous, the Cheetos fashion show. <laughs> so Cheetos did a hot, a hot couture show, and I mean, how ridiculous are we getting nowadays when Cheetos did a show? And um, so they had all these looks, and um, all <laughs> it was at the King's Theater in Brooklyn. Um, uh, no, 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 sorry, that's something else. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, wait, go, go back on the teleprompter. Y'all know I can't see that good. <laughs> okay, the Cheetos Hulk Couture show. And like years ago, they did another thing where they did another collection, and all the pieces were like, inspired by the, like, the Cheeto balls and the Cheeto uh, uh, flaming hot sticks. So I think this was very interesting. <laughs> I'm more upset I didn't go to the show for a free bag. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so next time Cheetos, y'all do a show, invite a bitch so I can come and get me some chips for free. <laughs> okay? And um, those were the popular things I want to talk about from New York Fashion Week. And um, yeah, give it a Fashion Week! Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I am so excited about this, Miss Girl, Miss Honey, Miss Child. We have a first in exchange rate history, performing her new single, Eye on You, makes a noise for the actress, activist, singer, songwriter, and my homegirl, Mila Jam. <laughs>
spinning over my head. Just take me away. You take me. I'm under your spell. The chills are real. The chills are real. Oh my God, please one more time, make some more noise for Mila Jam. That was incredible. <laughs> I am gonna hold this mic for you because... Yes, I can't hold the microphone. <laughs> so, so is this your new single, yeah? This is my new single, yes. Is, is she out now? Can we go to the iTunes, the Spotify, and everything and get her right now? Fully out. And cool. what is the name of it? It's called Eye on You, and it's on every platform. iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, so stream, stream, stream. Mm-hmm. And, and you also just recorded a video for this. I sure did. And um, I, I, I'm not going to tell you who the who the who your love interest or your partner in the video is, but he is. <laughs> he's all right. Oh, he's a beautiful. <laughs> and you're just finishing your Pride tour. So talk to us about going to all these states and performing at Pride festivals around, yeah. around the states. Uh, I just came back from San Diego Pride. I did Jersey City Pride, New York Pride. I'm actually going to South Carolina, Ooh. right down there in Spartanburg. So that's exciting. Hey, what's up, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're on Spartanburg, make yeah. sure you go see Mila Jam so you can see. Tell come and see the show. Uh-huh. Spartanburg, if you're in Spartanburg, comment in the link below and tell us if you saw Mila. And if you put a picture of your body song, I like it. Yeah. Or if you're in body paint, great, post it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mila Jam. Follow her where all social, um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. She's an amazing, amazing, amazing and beautiful artist and person, and she is fucking fierce. Amen? Yeah. Thank you, Mila. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with two of the legendary icons of film and TV, Randy and Benson. How are y'all doing? Drag in general, but drag con specifically has become this thing that people travel to from all around the world now. We just met someone who came all the way from Poland. Poland? And she also said she'd like overcome a serious mental illness that watching you in Drag Race had helped her overcome her mental health issues. I mean, it's like, it's great, right? It, 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 it's amazing. Like, I mean, Poland, South Africa, Australia, literally people from around the globe. And it's because of the work that Rue and you guys do. It's really because of the talent of you and the rest of the girls. That's why everybody's here. And it's so exciting because you just have to walk through the floor and you feel this kind of energy. This is the world we should be living in. DragCon exactly. is what the future of America should be, not what's out there outside, outside these four walls. Uh, my first drag con, I never, I never forget when like this really, this like three groups of like black families came, like a, a, this, this really bro straight black dad and his kids. And his, like, to see like growing up, I never thought that would ever be a thing. And drag con, drag really has this thing of bringing families together. It brings back, yes, it's like kids and yeah. grandparents. Uh -huh. It's a sort of multi-generational thing because What's not to like? Yeah. You know, I think Jack speaks to the child in all of us, you know. We like we all like bright, shiny things. You know, bright, right? shiny yeah. things, you know. <laughs> right? And I think it's a universal, Rue says, you're born naked and the rest, and the rest is, is dry. dry. The looks of the queens, also if you look at the, just the people who come, yeah. they're like turning it out. Yeah. The looks of the audience is just amazing. You know, Ben and I have been obsessed with drag since we we're in college. Yeah. We always we got more excited by drag queens than any other stars, pop stars, rock stars, movie stars. 
And it's so exciting that now the rest of the world is seeing that drag queens, especially the really talented ones, are like, I feel like I'm at the Academy Awards. <laughs> I think that's why you guys' take on drag has become so, that people are clinging to it because you guys are people who honestly like drag. And you can tell the difference with, uh, versus people who use drag as a commodity or a prop. Uh -huh. You guys are like, this is actually a fierce thing and we really believe in the power of drag. I think the power of drag is the sort of the joy and the creativity and the like, fuck it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The, the idea of like, not being living by someone else's rules or looking the way other people think you should look. Yeah. I think that's what attracted us to it. And I love y'all. These people helped me launch my star. They can say they did it, but they really did. And I love you guys so much. Transgender and gender non-conforming communities experience marginalization, stigma, and discrimination more than any other minority community in the world. Later this month, individuals from these communities and their allies will gather in D.C. for the National Trans Visibility March, and we've got two very special people here today to talk all about it. Please welcome Malik Yoba and Carmen Carrera! Yes, 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 yes! Oh, cheers. Oh, yes. Carmen, where's your drink? Oh, yes, honey. Oh, Listen, can I just tell you, every guest we've had has declined to drink alcohol, and I'm always here like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> No, cheers, y'all. Thank you for being uh, here today. Is Woo! Is that, is, that, is that a screwdriver? I don't know. What, what this is This is Kila and Pineapple, I think. Oh! <laughs> which is called a Paloma. No, that's, that's not a Paloma. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Not sure. This is, um, I drink. recently started to uh, uh, take, watch my figure. So this is just a tequila water. Okay. <laughs> you don't need that. You don't need the extra calories. No, no calories. I don't need calories with the juice. Um, Carmen, last time I saw you, we were uh, we were on set for Madonna's music video. That's right. Yeah. And um, it was fun. It was a long day. It was a very long day. Everyone had to be very patient because in this business, it's it's hurry up and wait. So they the keep time. you on the edge of this like anticipation. Like we're about to shoot. We're about to shoot. Be ready. But then we're literally sitting there for I know. hours. It is like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like an orgasm. Ah, ah, not the yet. whole day, yeah. you know, not yet, never really happening. <laughs> um, and how much Fashion Week for you? You? Oh God, Fashion Week is always exhausting because I'm only here for such a short period of time. I live in LA now. Mm -hmm. I grew up here in New Jersey, um, but it's it's just hectic. It's a lot of like going back to the hotel and changing. Like I can't stay in the same outfit all day long. Right. Like if I'm gonna go to a different show, right? I want to keep it fresh. I want to keep it cute. So it's just exhausting. But honestly, it's like I'm taking in all of the beauty, all of the poise, um, just just being kind of ahead of the curve of like what's gonna come out next season yeah. is extremely helpful. Um, and just That's kind of- That's outfit is so cute. You oh yeah, this is Victoria Hayes. Yeah, I designed that. You designed that, Malik designed it. No. <laughs> Malik, you look very dapper yourself <laughs> too. You look very sharp. Did, did you enjoy the, the fashion week festivities? Uh, I, I went to uh, one show. One show? Yeah, Chromat show. Chromat? Was, was Carmen I was walking, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In Chromat. I, I didn't get an invitation, so I feel like they shaded me, Carmen. Ooh, we're gonna have to reach out to somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Malik, yo, can I just tell you? So obviously, one of one of the things that my when when my mom found out you on the show, she was like, "Please ask him what is why did I get married?" Uh, three coming out. Uh, and, uh, I don't know. You don't know? I got killed. My character got killed. I know, but like you, you, you know how it's how you, yeah. you, you're gonna resurrect from I, the dead, I and you're gonna be the yeah. ghost of Christmas past, and it's gonna be a whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you, ha I mean, you, you are, you're an A-list actor who's been in, in countless. I mean, no, no, no. Let's get it clear. I'm on A-list. <laughs> lies, <laughs> lies, no, lies, lies. He's lies. A -list. <laughs> He's an amazing actor. He's yeah, I know. Me. He's, he's. She, she's actually pretty amazing. I've been coached. Yeah. Nobody knows. People don't that. know this, but she's got, she's got <laughs> range. Oh, I believe it. Carmen, yeah, she definitely Carmen is a very talented. To a woman. Yeah. Um, and you have a First Wives Club coming coming out from Yes, we do. September 19th. September uh, 19th. A, a play opposite Jill Scott. Um, first Wives Club remake. Uh, Tracy Oliver, who did uh, Girls Trip. Yeah. Uh, executive producers. Her first show as a showrunner. Um, wow. So it's um, Ryan Michelle Bath, who's uh, Sterling Brown's wife. Yeah. Hilarious. Michelle Boutte. Uh. They're, they're hilarious. Uh, anybody know the show's coming? The black version yeah. of her. There's a white person shaking their head vigorously. <laughs> well, for first, okay, remake. first class stuff is like is dude with the hoods. <laughs> like I don't know what he's talking about. It's remake. Yeah, there was an old what, Be yeah. Midler. Be yeah. Is he awake? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's him. That's it. He's awake. See, he's yeah, awake. it's a sleepy time. 
<laughs> um, first Wives Club is an iconic film. We 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 all know the, the original yes. First Wives Club, so now yes. the remake is coming out yes. with on BET. Yes, and it's all black everything. All black everything. Why yes. not? And yes. whose husband do you play? Jill Scott. Jill Scott, who is playing like. Who's the parallel? She, uh, the, the Bette Midler character. Bette Midler character, yeah. work. The, the, work, the, work. The, the singer. The, the, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I really can't wait to see it. It debuts September 14th? 19th. 19th, 19th on yeah. BET, so make sure y'all check your local listings yeah. and check that out. Yeah. Chris Wise Club. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and now, so you guys are you, you guys are, are both very big activists for for now for for, for 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 National Trans Visibility March, and you guys have the Love and Trauma panel uh, workshop. Workshop. Can you yeah. tell us about what that looks like? What it really is? The mechanics thereof? Are you guys really talking cute. about? Um, you want to go first? Um, uh, sure. Well, this workshop was actually birthed from us just coming together as as friends. You know, I, I didn't I, I didn't really know how um, active Malik was with um, with the trans community and wanting to put the messages out there. And when we became friends, we were just like sitting down, speaking on our experiences. And you know, as a trans woman, you do experience a lot of trauma after you transition, not only socially but romantically. Yeah. And how do we heal that? How do we sort of give the resources, the tools? the language to the men who do have interest and show interest and love to us, and also the women who have been through a lot, whether it's sex work or whether it's just loving yourself, you know? And how do you do that as a trans person in this day and age when we're still fighting for our equal rights? Yeah. So, you know, we, we sort of sat down together and we said, okay, from his perspective as a man who is interested in all women, mm -hmm. trans women included, yeah. um, how, how can Malik give another man who is struggling with the language of accepting himself, you know, how can Malik sort of give him some tools? And then how can me as a trans woman give the women tools to find that like inner self-love, yeah. basically? So um, that's where she came to, or from, to the, to the conversation. For me, um, my relationships with trans people goes to being a kid uh, coming up in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Julia Richmond High School. Um, well, well, it gets from the Bronx, y'all. From the Bronx. The Bronx, BX, lean back, uh-huh, all of that. Um, and uh, a kid named Anton became Octavia St. Laurent, who ended okay. up in the movie Paris is yeah. Burning. Uh -huh. So we were friends as kids. There were two kids that transitioned in high school. One, um, I remember after we did a talent show, he came as Boy George. And every day after school, he came dressed in drag. Next thing I know, he was pushing the shopping cart through Washington Square Park wow. with all his belongings. And so between that, between growing up in Spanish Harlem, seeing people who were caught somewhere in their transition with breasts and beards and dope fiend, dope addicted as a kid, I'd have to pass these people going to school yeah. as a kid. And so when I, uh, and just coming up as a, as a community activist myself, I started working with young folk uh, as a 16 year old. Um, always using art to educate and engage and give people a voice. Um, I saw an opportunity in a marginalized community yeah. to say, you know what, um, we could tell these stories, we can humanize you. In mm -hmm. fact, Octavia, before she died, uh, we had been working on some stuff. Okay. Um, we reconnected when she was HIV positive and recovering from crack addiction. Wow. Uh, and that was probably 2003. 2002, somewhere in there. And uh, for a long time, the girls were afraid to tell their stories. Yeah. And, you know, I think social media has made it possible for the conversation to become normalized. Yeah. And I think um, as a 52-year-old who's been seeing these stories for a long time not be told, um, I felt like I can do something about that. And so um, as a background, as a teaching artist and using art to educate, I knew that if you bring people into a space like this, and we had candles burning, and there was incense, and there was sage, and there was a keyboard player playing, and someone singing, or someone doing a poem, all of a sudden you feel better. And you can have a conversation about your pain through a poem, through a yeah. song, through a testimony, through meditation. And you can bring a different modality to a community that is traumatized. Yeah. Right, so snow. There's a monk. There's an elephant in the room. Yeah, people are questioning Absolutely. some things they might have heard and seen, but I know you feel in your spirit what's really happening. Right. Absolutely. Thank, so thank you for saying that. I don't have to say anything. You, you don't can feel it. Yeah. You can feel that. Yeah. And so, so we live in a culture 
where, you know, I was watching some Im images of xenophobia in South Africa, watching folks burn each other in the middle of the street. I don't know if y'all have seen those images, but look at what's happening in South Africa today. Mm -hmm. People stoning each other, and they're watching it in circles. It reminds me of coming out of a Suzanne Barsh party back in the 90s, and there was a woman bleeding in front of Bentley's nightclub on the street, bleeding from her head. The bouncer's standing there, folks are standing around. I walk out, I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? Get me. Yeah. No one was doing anything. But people are standing around and they'll talk about it. Mm. Every hero of mine has been killed. The people that I admire are the people, Marsha P. Johnson, yeah. Sylvia. Marcus Garvey, Mandela, Gandhi. Those are the people that get vilified when you stand in the ignorance and you say this is wrong and I can love you just because you're different. And don't be afraid because your pain is my pain. Give it up for that, y'all. That's very important, I think. Well, and, and that's, that, that's very funny that, that you mentioned that. Because speaking of social media, you know, recently you um, reposted the video of Marcus Willoughby and his and and his and the trauma that he faced from and everybody being a missed trans the point of, of that. They video. missed the point. They talked about I'm gay and you faggot. And fuck you, piece of shit. You're an abomination. You're unworthy. You're a disgrace. But I got a lot of love. I got thousands of people who said thank you. Yeah. Because my child, my lover, my daughter, my son is in pain. And so we want to vilify each other because we don't understand each other. But if we do this and you make it safe, and I say I love you, I see you, mm -hmm. I feel you, I don't care if you do this, that's you. Yeah. You need to do that. Just like black men need to walk in the street and be like, yo, what's up, nigga, what? Because that's his protection. Yeah. But if he stands straight and he speaks with perfect English, you're faggot. This is what we do. Yeah. And so I've recognized through the vilification and the condemnation that my mission remains the same. I'm here to serve. And that's what this is. This is the first time in my life, 30 years in this business of entertaining folks, I say something from my heart that shakes the world. Yeah. That is profound. Absolutely, 100%. And so what follows that is an understanding of this work that we have to do. Yeah. She changed my life. <laughs> she how, did. How did you guys meet each other? I needed an acting coach. Oh, okay. And he was following me, so I was like, you know what, let me just... Send a DM. Shoot my shot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I was a fan of hers for a long time. I said, if I ever... I mean, she represents so many people, and transgender people are unicorns. They're magicians. They have a perspective that the rest of the world doesn't have. If you live in both gender identities in one lifetime, you see things that I would, we have conversations. Oh, the keys to the universe are in your right pocket, girl. Listen, you have, you have listen, a duality. Listen. Absolutely. Listen. I'm listening, boo-boo. <laughs> we have conversations I've never had with anyone. I'm like, yo, wh what? I'm like, wow. But all transgender people, transgender men especially. I sit with my, like, Teak Milan. Like Sir Knight and Love More, if you watch Black Trans TV. Yeah. And I sit with these kids and I'm like, so I had an interesting conversation with Teek about masculinity. So Teek says, I'm a queer, has, uh, no, she said, I'm a queer male. Mm -hmm. And I date straight women, just like this. And I'm feeling that swag. I'm like, word? Well, I'm a heterosexual male, I date straight women. And so we're having a conversation about loving straight women. And so he describes his experience as a queer individual, as a cultural uh, um, subscription, if you will. And I say, well, I'm heterosexual. So does that mean that I now need to redefine what it means to be heterosexual? Or does that mean I now need to identify as queer? I'm not sure about all the labels, but the conversation is interesting. Because there's a perspective that says our humanity is as individual as our fingerprint yet we try to make everybody fit in the same box. Yeah. We had a conversation. 
There were many things that I lost this week. I lost dough. I lost relationships. People said, we got to step back from you. Because someone said something on Instagram, Facebook, and half the folk believe it. And that's okay. I understand. Everybody ain't going to believe everything. But you feel who I am. You know it's a lie. This is no act. This is God working through me to fulfill a purpose. That's the difference. And so when you sit with a fraternity, you say, listen, I understand, but you need to ride with me. Because we had an executive director in our fraternity that was murdered and burnt to death, just like that young woman who was burnt to death in Florida. Be loved, the little transgender woman, 17 years old, shot in the head, burnt beyond recognition. We had a director in our organization. And Phi Beta Sigma did not talk about it. I said, that was your opportunity to rise up and say, this is wrong. This wasn't just a murder, it was a hate crime. But you want to keep the gay population in your fraternity or the gender fluid or the confused or whoever out of the conversation. And you're asking me to be your, mental, your, 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 your spokesperson for the mentorship. So if we're mentoring young men, and we're not talking about all aspects of who you are as a human being, your spiritual side, your emotional side, your emotional intelligence, your financial literacy, your physical fitness, your spiritual fitness, the things you're confused about. If we're not touching all of those aspects of your life and helping you see yourself as a fully multidimensional human being, what are we doing? Yeah. So you need to stand with me. When the rest of the world is saying, we're not sure, you need to say, in this country we say, guilty or innocent until proven guilty. That is what we say. That's the law of the land. But people would rather say, fuck you, nigga, you guilty. Yeah. I said, you're going to stand with me or not? They said, we'll get back to you. I wake up on Saturday morning, it's online. We remove Malik Gilba. No, they did not remove me. And with the leadership in that organization, there are shady practices going on. And I'm not one to throw somebody under the bus, but it's a travesty the country we're living in right now. Where lying is the order of the day, and everybody accepts it, and my family has to suffer. Your, your daughter is here today. My daughter is here. Yeah. And she needs to see this. Yeah. Because what are we going to do? This is beyond Malik Yoba. This is beyond penises and vaginas. <coughs> this is beyond diversity. This is about humanity. What are we doing in this moment with this time that we have? This precious time. This is a bullet wound. I got shot at 15. I didn't come here to preach. But God is saying, you must do this right now while you have these people's attention. But I, I will say this. I think, I think that we have never seen, we have never seen in, in, in my in my. 29 years of life. I've never seen a black, strong, alpha male presence and energy come forth and say that I love trans women. I, I love tr- all, all people. Women. Yeah. Transgender people are people. Yeah. Carmen is an amazing human being that, that showed me her confidence just to live as Carmen. I was like, wow, I thought I was living authentically. I'm not. If I've been attracted, and what that means is that I've been curious, like, what is that humanity that exists within this person? Yes, let me lean in and ask you questions. And you fine as hell. God damn, I feel things. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? What am I supposed to do with that? We don't have the language. Mm. We haven't created the spaces for men to say, you know what, I like this too. You too. Me. How many dudes have, they, I can't tell you how many, and to all the men, and all the people who have DM'd me in the last week, it's in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Please, please, you, you freed me. Please, be famous people, not so famous people, who are trying to find a space. And so love and trauma, for me, comes from an activist, artist background that says we can create a space where we can look at love and trauma from a, political, a policy perspective, a community perspective, an education perspective, a healthcare perspective, a holistic perspective to say that this human being and all people that she represents deserve the same love as everybody else. And so we want to create the space to have that conversation and to film it and to distribute it. So, so, so this, this will be filmed to take. Absolutely. Right. See, my mission, I'm a storyteller. You know, one of the stories I'm doing is I'm, I'm a real estate developer as well. One of the projects I'm working on and negotiating I'm most proud of is the first LGBT uh, youth center in New York City for kids of color. 
Okay. That's the work that I've been doing. I'm not, I'm not in this world trying to hurt people. I'm not in this world trying to do devious and deviant things. And so we need to be clear. Because when those things happen to you, the people will tell you don't defend it. They're going to think that you're trying to defend something. It didn't happen, so don't defend it. And so by law, by law of averages, somebody in this room is on some bullshit. And somebody in this room is somebody that's going to send a, a, hate, a hate text. Somebody in here does that. My and phone is cut off, so it won't be me. Don't somebody. <laughs> somebody here does that. And I want you to think about that. When you go to send something that's hateful, ask yourself, why? How can I instead lift someone up? How about ask the question instead of make the statement? I'm curious. Can you please help me explain? Because I got a lot of those questions, too. People yeah. are very respectful and say, you know, I'm really curious. Can you help me explain this transgender thing? And I'm like, look, I don't understand it all. I'm learning from the people in the community. What I'm choosing to do is say, can I be your friend, especially the transgender men? Because I, especially the transgender black men and Latino men that I see that are out there that hit me up, or people who are raising transgender male children, yeah. uh, like my friend Jody Patterson, who wrote the book uh, Bold World. Um, I just have to lean in so I can learn. Yeah. So I could, just the same way I work with incarcerated individuals, the same way I work with young people with special needs, the same way why I'm on boards and yeah. I do the work. It's not about being an actor. It's about being a servant. A human being. Yes, and a little bit of a preacher. So I'm going <laughs> to give you back your show. Let me give you back your show. Big up for Nick Gilbert Carver, y'all. So listen, if you are interested and you can get yourself to D.C., the National Trans Visibility March is Saturday, September 28th, and you can find more info. And including... our workshop is on the 27th. The oh, you, so, so, so the workshop is on the 27th. The so day if, day you can, if you can call out of work on the 26th to get there by the 27th, it's on the 27th. For more info, including how to sign up for the virtual march at the link the link, the link is below. Look at that link. <laughs> Make some noise for one more time for Malik Yoba and Carmen for being here. Thank you have no questions? Thank you. <laughs> you answered all my questions. Oh, I, was, I was ready. I was like, so now I want to. But you, you, you addressed everything I needed to know, girl. <laughs> sir, thank you so very much. Carmen, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, I just want to say I appreciate you so much for having us on no, here. Of course, yes, yes, kidding yes, me, of course. Thank you for so being thank here. You, I love yeah. you. And just thank continue you. to support um, the LGBT community, um, especially the trans community, and, and especially the folks of color within our community, because not only do we have, you know, just one a part of our identity that is oppressed. It's multiple parts of our identities that are depressed. I mean, yeah. not depressed, oppressed. Oppressed, yeah. Um, so yeah, just thank you for having us on here and giving us the opportunity to speak. And thank you all for being here as well and, and, and listening to us. It means a lot. Cheers. Listen. At the exchange rate, we want to hear from everyone, and you know, of course, when when anything when when when, when the news came out, and we we, we spoke about you on, on on last week on Hot Topics, and um and you know and of course the immediate reaction was like um, to see this amazing black male talk about loving people and loving everyone. It was beautiful, and everyone in, in the studio was fully supporting, and we were all full of. But of course, the allegations came out and everything, and so I'm happy that you came in here. Unfiltered. He, because he, sometimes people come, they're like, "You can't ask me about this, that, that, and the other." Fuck he was like, shit. "Whatever you want to talk about, it's 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 at play. We can talk about whatever you want." So to me, that speaks volumes, um, and we're very grateful that you came. You guys stopped by. Cheers, so cheers. You. Cheers, my cheers. Love you. Y'all better soak up them calories. I got my water. Okay. <laughs> now before we go, I'm giving out our tip of the week. Mm -hmm. This week's tip goes to Brazil's Supreme Court for ruling that a Marvel comic showing two men kissing can be sold despite the complaints of Rio de Janeiro's homophobic ass motherfucking mayor. And a special shout out to the Brazilian newspaper who put that kiss right on their front page. Woo, look at that! Y'all can't see it, I can see it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's all for this week. And tune in next time. And remember to always keep your currency in check. Thank you, y'all. Peace. Yes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.